Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jeff Edwards. I'm uh, president and CEO of Economic Development Corporation of Utah. Uh, I've been asked to be the moderator for the, the panel today. Uh, I appreciate very much being included in this uh, dialogue today. Um, <clears throat> we're going to talk today about uh, what uh, the structure is in Utah currently for um, working with exports and uh, dealing with this question that we're talking about today. Uh, I'm happy to say that we have a, a lot of thought and effort that's gone into that already, and we'll hear about some of that today as well. Uh, I want to start by thanking uh, J.P. Morgan Chase. Uh, none of this would have happened without the foresight and the leadership of this remarkable global organization, and in particular, our local leader, uh, Craig Zollinger, who you've heard from before. Uh, Craig's one of those guys that's behind the scenes, always uh, pushing us as an organization, make us better, help us to come into this, and I, we really appreciate his role in doing that. And then secondly, I want to thank Brookings. Um, I, I, I teased Amy a little bit the other night, uh, last night about Brookings uh, finally realizing that there was something a little bit west of the Mississippi River. And, uh, uh, and, and to her credit, and she said before, I think Brookings is one of the first organizations, uh, national think tank organizations in the country to recognize the strength and the importance of the intermountain economies. And if you're familiar with the mountain megas that they launched a few years ago, the outstanding, really thought leading uh, uh, ideas that they put forward and really put us on the map and, and frankly, help change the level of interest that there is in the intermountain economies because of their thought leadership. So I, I certainly appreciate that. Um, you're going to hear about some interesting ideas today, I think, uh, about how growth, uh, we've heard already growth is going to come from international and not from domestic. Uh, the important role that local government plays in that going forward, you've heard about that already from a couple of these folks. Um, the importance of income growth. Um, in our market, uh, we have a unique demographic in that we have lots of young families uh, lots of uh, the, some of the one of the fastest growing states in the country between two and a half and three percent growth and Natalie will fill us in on that a little bit but that creates an interesting dynamic about needing jobs not only high paying jobs but also lots of jobs for these all these new people that are coming into the workforce so we have a dual challenge of having needing increased wages but also more jobs overall so with that uh, let me uh, stop and I'll add some other comments as well but I'd like to introduce our panelists today uh, to my uh, right, left is uh, Natalie, excuse me, uh, Teresa Foxley, who is the Managing Director of uh, the Governor's Office of Economic Development for Corporate Recruitment and International Trade. She has a big job. Uh, she's got, uh, uh, we work with her every day on something. We're always working on projects together. Uh, our, our organization, at Economic Development Corporation of Utah, is a close working partner with Teresa and her team. Uh, to her left is Derek Miller, who is the uh, President and CEO of the World Trade Center Utah. Uh, Governor's former chief of staff and also spent some time, did time in, in D.C., right? Isn't that what we can talk about? Hard time. As well. That's right. And then uh, to Derek's left is Natalie Gochner. Natalie's an associate dean here in the business school at the University of Utah. Her office is just down the hall, so she had the shortest commute today. She's also the chief economist for the uh, Salt Lake Chamber uh, and is actually a legitimate economist. So we kind of listen to when Natalie speaks. We all listen pretty carefully. And then to her left is uh, Mayor Ben McAdams, uh, recently elected in 2013 as the new mayor of Salt Lake County, uh, a former uh, advisor to Mayor Becker, and also uh, I should point out that three of the five people up here are all recovering attorneys, and so uh, <laughs> we, we've allowed them to come today only because they've been willing to set aside that other profession and be with us in the larger scope of economic <laughs> development. So with that, I'm going to go to Natalie first. I think Natalie's got some information to share with us and talk about to kind of set the stage for our conversation for the next few minutes. And by the way, at the end of our time, Ellen's going to give me a signal, and we're going to turn to all of you. So if you have a question, be thinking about what your question might be for this great panel you've got up here. We'll have time for some short questions at the end. So Natalie, why don't we start with you? Great. Happy to do that. Uh, thanks for being here today. <coughs> Welcome to the David Eccles School of Business. This is a wonderful and beautiful campus, and I hope you get some time to saunter around campus because it's a lovely place. I was asked to set a context by talking for just a moment about the Utah economy. And uh, you know, many of you are locals, you know this, we have visitors here, but let's just uh, think about it in this way. If I had to pick a word to describe the Utah economy right now, I would pick the word powerhouse. We sit here in the interior west, we have the fastest growing economy in America right now in terms of job growth, very low unemployment, <laughs> Uh, our tourism industry is the leading growth industry in the state right now. Right behind that is a tech industry that's doing a lot of great things. Uh, we have an economy that's very well diversified and a, an economy that's global. And you saw Amy walk through a lot of this data, but when you think about a little city in the interior west that doesn't have a lot of things around it, 
you know, there's basically a great basin and you know, a lot of distance between us and other metropolitan areas. And the Utah economy is doing exceptionally well. And I would credit that to some of our natural amenities. I would credit it to great leadership in our state. And I would credit it to um, the foresight that we've had as a state to invest. And we, that's something that is a tradition in this state. If you just think right now we're investing in the rebuild of our international airport, it's a very large capital project that will change the equation for us in the very near, ter near term. We've invested in transportation in a mighty way. And it wasn't but too long ago that we invested to become an Olympic city, a global world city. And uh, Jeff, I hope that's a helpful introduction. We can talk export data a little bit more as we get into this, but we are very fortunate to be in a state right now that is leading. Great, thank you, Natalie. Um, Teresa, let me turn to you next, and maybe you could talk a little bit about what the state's role in international economic development is. Absolutely, well, thank you, Jeff. Um, first, I'd, I'd really like to start with the why. Um, Amy did an excellent job earlier describing why Utah should be focused on international development. Uh, really, as our office is focused on improving, improving quality of life for Utahns by expanding and diversifying our revenue base and employment opportunities, we know that growing our, our, our own community of exporters and making them more internationally focused will have the effect of doing that, diversifying our revenue base, increasing our employment uh, opportunities. Our international focus within the Governor's Office of Economic Development has really historically been focused on three areas, diplomacy, export promotion, and foreign direct investment. Diplomacy is so foundational to what we do because it builds relationships, it lends credibility, and it expands the Utah brand abroad. But that relationship building component is critical, not just in domestic uh, business relationships, but also is especially, I would say, in international relationships. Um, GoEd supports Utah companies that are expanding into new, into new markets through our STEP program, which is the State Trade and Export Promotion Program, a federal and state partnership that allows us to provide uh, resources to companies that are looking to expand into new markets through attending trade shows uh, and having matchmaking with international companies. Trade missions uh, and our trade representatives in Europe, Israel, Mexico, and China. Further, we are really excited about a new era of partnership with Derek Miller and the, the World Trade Center of Utah. Um, as our economic development efforts become more sophisticated, we are uh, specializing increasingly in, our, in, in those efforts. Uh, through this renewed partnership, the World Trade Center of Utah will be primarily for this, uh, responsible for the state's export promotions, and GOED will primarily focus on diplomacy and foreign direct investment. Um, we are really enthusiastic about the partnership and our ability to leverage our, our uh, partner agency or partner organization with the World Trade Center of Utah because it will allow us to get more targeted in our FDI strategy. Uh, we know that a good FDI strategy is very dependent on a solid export foundation and relying on that expertise um, will give us uh, numerous benefits. Again, Amy uh, reviewed earlier today what FDI is, uh, so I won't belabor that point, but, but quickly we do know that uh, FDI results in higher paying jobs, increased productivity, expanded manufacturing base, and exchange of ideas and cluster development and R&D. Um, so although we're a, we're a relatively small state, we're optimistic about our future of FDI due to uh, a number of natural components that we have within the state, but primarily our workforce. Uh, we, much of our workforce has spent time abroad and understands international markets and therefore becomes a great cultural fit for foreign firms looking to, to do business in the state. Uh, Derek, let's turn to you. Uh, could you talk a little bit about the World Trade Center, Utah's role in, in exports? Well, I'm just thrilled to see so much excitement and focus and attention on something that at the World Trade Center Utah, we spend every breathing, waking hour thinking about and, and working on. I want to thank Mayor McAdams and, and bringing the Global Cities Initiative here. We're grateful to have a partnership with Salt Lake County in, in uh, being part of the latest cohort, cohort with the Brookings Institution, as well as J.P. Morgan Chase. At the World Trade Center Utah, our mission statement is to help Utah companies think act and succeed globally. And I'll highlight just three areas where we do that. The first is under the heading educate and motivate. So we do monthly seminars 
Um, we do regional forums off the Wasatch Front forums out in the rural Utah. And uh, we do this solely to help Utah companies demystify the process of getting involved in international business. We also work with companies one-on-one -on, -one, uh, on a B2B basis. We'll sit down and do business coaching, help them to do market analysis, help them to find the right partners based on their product or their service where in the world ought they be focused. And then the third thing that we do is uh, we partner, as Teresa mentioned, with the Governor's Office of Economic Development uh, in, hope, in hosting diplomatic visitors. And if you're not already aware of this, you really need to be. Um, we get an inordinate amount of diplomatic visitors to our state. Just in the past few weeks alone, we've hosted the ambassador from Mexico, the ambassador from Peru, the ambassador from Thailand, the ambassador from the Republic of Korea, the ambassador from Poland, the ambassador from Latvia, the ambassador from Russia, luckily not both on the same day, <laughs> and um, although that would have been interesting. Uh, but making these business connections for you all out there in the audience to be able to sit next to these diplomatic visitors, exchange business cards, and begin to build a relationship is a huge benefit to our state. Great, thank you, Derek. Uh, let me briefly explain what our organization does and how we fit with these two others. And, and again, Economic Development Corporation of Utah, a, a private sector nonprofit initiative whose uh, main objective is to, around business recruiting and retention. So uh, our job is to, uh, is to work with companies that express interest in coming to Utah to be a single point of contact for them as they're looking to come to the state, but also to work with existing companies that are here already. And we have a close partnership with, with uh, GoEd, with Teresa and Val's office, to do that very thing, that when leads come in about in companies that are interested, they land in our shop, and it's our job to, re to qualify them, to assign a, a point of contact for them, and to work them through the entire process. And that includes uh, collaboration with Teresa, introducing them to Derek, uh, having them meet local uh, leaders, all the things that you might, if you were a business owner considering a, a, a new location, you might consider as well. Um, but we also have a re role in, in uh, this international side, and that is uh, a foreign direct investment opportunity looks very much uh, not that really that different from a lead coming from a company that's a, a domestic company as well. This, the, the, the questions are the same. Uh, where can I find workforce? What about real estate? What about taxes? All those kinds of questions they might have. And that's the very same process. So we work very collaboratively together on those uh, projects already. Um, I know some of the comments were made uh, that we're, we're a little bit of a, a unique in our experience with recruiting in that we've seen uh, not a decrease, but actually an increase in the level of interest by site selection consultants and by companies in our market again and again and again with hundreds of these leads and projects that are out here and the level of interest, as Teresa said, has been very high. If you look at the last 12 months, uh, our two organizations together added about 12,000 new jobs, excuse me, 15,000 new jobs, either new or retained jobs to the economy that otherwise wouldn't be here in Utah. And in a tight labor market, uh, that's a pretty significant accomplishment. So we're looking at the Global Cities Initiative as a way to add to what we're doing and to really leverage the experience and, and, the, and the exposure that we already have. Uh, last night, one of the, our visitors uh, took me aside and said, I have to say that we, we had a roundtable discussion with about uh, 25 or 30 people around the table. And this person said to me, I am just so surprised to see the level of collaboration that is happening around this table. He said, I have to say this is very different from other places where I've been, where there is a lot of turf going, you know, turf conversations going on and so on. And I have to say that the reason, that I think we know that that's sort of built into the culture here that, that is really to our advantage. But one of the things that, about this project that's been unique is that it's been led by the county and by Mayor McAdams, who has really set that tone to say, we're all on this together, and I, I really appreciate that. And I, I communicated that to our visitor to say, we've got the right people at the table here. So, uh, Mayor McAdams, let me give this to you for a minute and have you talk about why, why did you take this on and why are exports so important to the county? Yeah, thank you, thank you Jeff. Um, yeah, thank you. We look at this, Salt Lake County is, is a thriving metropolitan area. 1.1 um, million people living in Salt Lake County, uh, interspersed among 16 cities, six townships, uh, but really, in an overarching way, is really just a unified metro area. And what's, what, you can't distinguish any of these cities or townships from each other. Uh, we're interconnected and we're dependent on each other. And the success, our success is dependent upon each other. Salt Lake County, those 1.1 million people represent uh, almost 
almost 40% of our state's population, also represents about 50% of the jobs in the state of Utah and 70% of our state's exports. So it's an, it's an, uh, so what's good for Salt Lake County, I think it's safe to say, is, is good for the state of Utah. So when, when I was elected mayor, we came in and said, we need to develop a, a metro area approach to economic development, a regional approach to, to economic development. We, we have great confidence in the things that are happening at the state level, uh, leadership of our governor and the legislature, GOED and, and World Trade Center Utah. We have uh, our members and have great uh, support uh, for the Salt Lake Chamber of Commerce. And our cities are doing great things in placemaking and the, the built environment that is so important to economic development. But, but I said there's got to be there is a a gap at the metro area um, that we can add to be a value added to, to to economic development. But before we do that, we don't certainly don't want to duplicate uh, the great things that are already happening or compete with with, with what's happening um, at our I should mention EDC Utah as well. Yeah, um, but the That's great just things that yeah. we just know. <laughs> Um, to, to duplicate the, the great things that are happening elsewhere. I don't believe that the right place for Salt Lake County is to, uh, to duplicate less effectively. We would be less effective at, at duplicating corporate recruitment and, and, and some of the other things. We want to support those efforts. But, but in, in unifying this metro area that for, for, for far too long has been disparate and disconnected um, as we've had 16 different cities approaching it uh, to their best, in the best way they know how and, and in their best interest, but a unifying way to, to approach this. And we want to certainly do that in a deliberative way and, uh, and using the best data and, and, and charting a course that, that is, is based on the needs of our community. So that, um, with that in mind, uh, we became aware of the Global Cities Initiative at, at Brookings and um, it's a competitive process. We applied. Um, we very much wanted to receive it, so we're very happy to be here today. But applied uh, to the Global Cities Initiative, and and have uh, jointly with World Trade Center Utah. We've now been about six months in, in laying the groundwork for this initiative that culminates today in the in the launch, and and will lead to many further efforts. But um, over the last six months, working with Brookings, we've um, we've been looking at the data that underlines our exports. And um, a couple of things that, that jump out to us that I think reaffirm the need for us to, to develop a, a more deliberate export strategy. Uh, we, as I, as I mentioned earlier, we are 70% of our state's, state's exports. We're the 39th largest metro area for exports in the United States. All of those things at a high level say things are good. And our economy in Utah is good. Um, and, 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 but as we look at the data and we peel the data back a little bit, we see some things that um, are a little bit more revealing about the character of our of our um, prosperity and and some things that give me um, concern. And, uh, the the biggest being that uh, while our exports are high, we are largely dependent for our exports on mining related exports. Thank goodness that we have um, those exports in our economy. They're an incredible contribution to our our prosperity. Um, but you know before I took a diversion from law, escaped from my practice of law <laughs> into politics. I was a, a securities attorney, and so um, I would write prospectuses on companies as we were bringing them to market, um, their IPO or, or further offerings from, from companies, and we worked with a lot of international companies. And, and one of the important parts of a prospectus is the risk factor section. And oftentimes we would have to write that risk factor to say this company is, is great, and if you want, and it's a healthy company, but 70% of their supply or 70% of their consumers is one entity. And you need to know that they're highly dependent on this other entity. So if you want to know how healthy this company is, you need to look at the company that's a supplier or a purchaser um, because their health is interrelated. And that's true. I think that's a risk factor for the Salt Lake metro economy is that we are highly dependent on, uh, on mining-related exports for our prosperity. And uh, to me, that says that's a strength, that we certainly have that, and we're grateful to have that. But also um, highlights to me the need to be deliberate about diversifying our exports. We have the opportunity to grow uh, and focus on some of these other industries that are, that are strong and have great growth potential, whether it's aerospace or electronics manufacturing or even outdoor, outdoor recreation manufacturing. Um, what are our strengths? What's the, the, what areas have the highest opportunity for 
for growth? What small and medium-sized enterprises, um, companies with, that are high-growth companies with 500 or fewer employees, the middle market companies where we can, uh, with a little bit of investment, can see a, a great amount of, of growth? And that's what Global Cities is about, is, is developing that deliberate export strategy and then working as a metro area, working with our partners at the state level and city level to, to implement a deliberate and data-driven export strategy. Great. Thanks, Mayor. Natalie, let me ask you, why is it so important that we tap into these emerging economies, especially that category of expendable income? How does that play into where we're looking at this export strategy? Well, I think it's important for people to understand, uh, you know, we have in merchandise exports somewhere around 12 billion a year. If we add in services, another five to six billion a year. But that's, that's the kind of activity we're talking about in the Utah economy. Uh, just imagine, just take the merchandise exports, so goods. Uh, just imagine if they went away. That would be about a billion dollars a month that's not circulating in this economy. And then take the service ones, that would be about, you know, half billion a month that doesn't circulate in this economy. All of a sudden, uh, the Utah Jazz aren't such a, you know, uh, successful operation. All of a sudden, things that we care about, uh, companies, our families, the thing that's so interesting about Utah is because we have this high birth rate, there's just all this demand coming into the system. And you have to find ways to fuel that economy, to bring uh, income into the state. And so when you mention emerging, mar emerging markets, uh, the whole global engagement that we need in this state, if we don't engage in such a high growth opportunity, we put at risk the ability for our children and grandchildren to stay here in Utah. And it, that's, I think that's the simplest way to think of it. Now, one other thing I want to mention, and I, I say this because of Mayor McAdams on the panel, but Mayor McAdams went to a lot of trouble to talk about Salt Lake County, you know, the percent of the population, the percent of the jobs, the percent of the exports. Yeah. We have to understand in this room that this guy is the mayor to the state when it comes to exports and when it comes to economic activity. That is to say that, you know, this is a global cities initiative. We're a city state, you know. Our, our activity in this state all comes, the vast, vast majority of it comes from the metropolitan area in the north. And we have, uh, we don't recognize political boundaries when it comes to markets. And so where Salt Lake County ends and Utah County begins is not an issue when it comes to economics. And so the leadership that happens in Salt Lake County is equally valuable to Utah County, that's my point, and to Davis County. And, and so the idea would be for us to really start to think about this as uh, don't get all caught up on political boundaries, don't get all caught up on you know, percent of this, that, and the other thing. We are a global state. We need exports. We have to have a viable strategy to grow those exports. And that's why I'm grateful to have entities like the Governor's Office of Economic Development and World Trade Center Utah, EDC Utah, and the Salt Lake Chamber to go lead that. And I would add to that that I, I think one of our success factors has been that kind of uh, agnostic approach to this, to say we're all in this together. I mean, you, you and, and the mayor, you, got, you guys all serve on our little board of trustees. The ground rules are there. When you come into the boardroom, everybody checks their guns at the door and says we're all in this together. And whether Salt Lake wins a project or St. George or Logan or San Juan County, we're all happy about it. We all work together. And that's, a, I think, a kind of a secret sauce that we have as an organization. And I didn't mean guns, really, honestly. Not literally. <laughs> literally, we keep we, our guns. We but, do. Yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> we, we remain armed during those yes. meetings. But we're, we're, we're all right. Gun away. <laughs> okay, I'm going to step somewhere else. And, and speaking of politics, I'm going to turn to Derek, who is, uh, you know, recently uh, federal government trade promotion authority just recently uh, came about. Could you talk a little bit about that, why that's important to us in Utah, what, how that matters, and, and you know, and, you know that, that's a big deal. Senator Hatch was very involved in that uh, process as well. Could you talk a little bit about that? Thanks for the opportunity. This is a big deal for Utah. And I'll segue from Natalie's comments um, as it relates to, she did a great job of explaining why you know, this, this global economy is important to Utah. Uh, and to build upon that, we are one of the few trade surplus states. So you, you often hear about uh, how the U.S. has a trade deficit with the rest of the world. Uh, Utah is a trade surplus state, one of the few on a recent report from our Department of Workforce Services uh, puts the annual average at about $4 billion a year. So, so trade is important for us. 
Uh, it's a bit of, of alphabet soup, so I'll just define it quickly. You've got TPA, Trade Promotion Authority, sometimes called Fast Track. TPP, which is the Trans-Pacific Partnership, that's a trade agreement that's currently being finalized. And TTIP, which is the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership. So when you think about TPP, that's uh, our uh, Asian countries, almost all of them except China. Um, 11 emerging, some of the largest emerging markets in the world. TTIP is basically the European Union, a trade agreement uh, with the European Union. And TPA is what the president needs to go negotiate the final deal. So TPA is what Congress has to approve, which they recently did. As Jeff referenced, uh, le an effort led by our own Senator Orrin Hatch. Um, and, and it allows the president to go negotiate the final deal and come back to Congress for an up or down vote. So it, getting that TPA authority allows now the president to move forward with both TPP and TTIP, which together represent about 64% of global GDP. So as a, as a trade surplus state, Utah has a lot to gain from opening these markets, lowering the barriers, and creating level playing fields as it relates to regulatory, as it relates to the financial uh, barriers uh, entry to market. So this is a great thing. Uh, we're moving in the right direction for Utah. That's great. Um, another topic on the national scene is one that's near and dear to all of our hearts, the XM Bank project. Um, and Teresa's been involved in that. Derek, I know others of you, anybody want to take that? Teresa, Derek, do you guys want to talk about where that stands at this point? I, Exim Bank uh, was, not, was not successful in being completed in June, as was planned. Anybody want to, maybe, maybe even an explanation, maybe some may, might not understand what that entity well, is. Well, Exim Bank is our federal uh, government's way of giving credit authorization, extending credit authorization to buyers. So if you're a Utah company and you want to export your goods um, and, and the person you're selling to needs credit authorization, the XM Bank uh, extends that credit authorization. Um, and it was not reauthorized. That re authorization uh, ended at the end of June. Um, we keep our finger very close to the pulse on this. And what we hear from those in Washington, D.C., is it will likely be reauthorized uh, once Congress returns at the end of the August recess. As someone who used to work for uh, Congress uh, and who sat on the floor of the House and saw a transportation bill passed on June 31st at 11.59 p.m. <laughs> because if we went into August recess, the bill was dead. I, I can tell you it, they're not going to do anything until they absolutely have to do something. I think we're going to see it reauthorized. Great. And of course, that has big implications for us here in Utah with our this very question, this export question. Uh, we've got. Uh, major manufacturer in Salt Lake County, Boeing, for example. This is a very important question for the folks at Boeing who sell their aircraft all over the world and, and uh, so on. So It certainly is incredibly important to Boeing, who uh, employs a lot of people here in Utah. And, and coming back to the statistic of an export job, and Boeing is every Boeing job is very much an export job, um, is, has a three to five multiplier. So Natalie says, uh, as Natalie says, the success of our exports. Also, one of the things we love about Utah, I think, is the foodie culture. And we have great restaurants, and and we have athletic teams, and we have great recreation. And whether you know whatever your, whatever you enjoy, symphony, the opera, the ballet, the Broadway, all of those things are reflective of a healthy and vibrant economy where there's discretionary income. And if we're going to continue that, we've got to continue to have vibrant exports. The one thing I think that sometimes gets lost in the conversation about XM Bank, a lot of times Boeing is the poster child for, for that. But the XM Bank and even some of these trade promotion authority uh, and trade agreements are important for small businesses with, you know, we met uh, an individual last night who um, has an eBay business that he runs online, six employees. but. A healthy and vibrant, uh, the ability to export uh, to the growing economy, glo growing global economies, is important to Boeing, but it's also important to our, our small businesses and our middle-sized businesses right here in Utah. Oh. And we should mention eBay. 
being the great global levelizer who is out there and, and making an opportunity for a six-person company in Utah to export to the world with the great tools at eBay. And eBay, of course, has a major presence here in our state as well. Jeff, I want to just be real Please. careful, too, on this point, because I, I don't work for the Salt Lake Chamber, but I, I do uh, contract work as a, as a chief economist for them. But we should just be really clear that on the auth reauthorization of the Export-Import <coughs> Bank, that our business community supports that. Yep. And it's not just about those people who directly benefit from it. It's about how it helps grow the Utah economy overall. Great, great comment. Okay, why don't we turn to the audience? We've got some time left here to do that. Are there anyone with a question? Uh, why don't we start? I can see that person right there. Why don't you stand? I can't see who that is. That's Andy. Andy, Andy please. Andy Buckmeyer, University of Utah. There's a mic coming to you right now. Right there. Hi, folks. I'd like to ask uh, maybe Natalie in particular about measures of success. Mm -hmm. We just recently received this award for an advanced manufacturing initiative with the Economic Development Administration. And in going through looking at employment in the state, it became clear that the composites cluster employed over 17,000 employees. Mm -hmm. But if you use your standard net codes, they, it got to be a much smaller number by those codes. And for example, we build uh, uh, ATK uh, builds airplane wings for Airbus and exports them to Europe. And that is more aligned with the manufacture of carbon composite tennis rackets and skis than it is with avionics. The standard measurements do not sh so show the actual success that we have in this market. How do we address that? Yeah. So this is an age-old problem about national income accounting and how do you characterize the economy. And it's very, very difficult. I mean, it wasn't too long ago that we didn't know how to define tourism. They did a better job of it when they you know, redid the NAICS codes. It's the same thing with tech these days, that they can't get the, the definitions to be just pure. And I would just, I mean, I think the answer to your question is that we have to just be vigilant in, in doing the proper research and analysis to understand these various industries. And sometimes it's not going to be dependent on national income accounting. Sometimes it's going to be based on survey data. It's going to be about asking and understanding and inventorying what you have in your state. Uh, I'm going to do it, Jeff, but you won't. You may not give me permission of this. But University of Utah, uh, you know, we're a part of a new public policy institute. We will be moving in the spring to the Wall Mansion on South Temple. We will take about 30 analysts with us down there, and we're, we intend to serve Utah. And we're going to have a lot of economists and demographers and analysts to help get at those kinds of questions. So that's just a teaser for what's to come. That's good. Thank you. Another question. Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Linda Thomas with Varian Medical Systems. First, I'd like to say thank you. I really appreciate it. This uh, whole seminar, convention, whatever, has been very helpful. Question for you. In Amy's presentation, she addressed specifically uh, the importance of the free trade agreements with the 20-plus countries we're working with. Is it possible to have some sort of training for the companies in Utah to learn how to utilize and understand NAFTA? There are so many intricacies in it. And each of the free trade agreements is so unique. Is it possible to have some sort of training for the business community so we can utilize the FTAs? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, hope, I, hope, I hope you and, and, and all of you will sign up for the World Trade Center newsletter. Go to WTCU, uh, or, or Utah.com, WTCUtah.com. And we're doing, as I mentioned, these trainings every month. It's not every month on NAFTA. Uh, they're different topics. But we often do doing business in Mexico events, doing business in the EU. Um, and so, yeah, that's what we do. Thank you. That's a great question. Any other questions? Anyone? I don't see any other questions. Well, uh, right here, please. Dr. Kolb. <laughs> Thank you, somebody of a self-serving question. <laughs> Could you, uh, um, I would like to ask uh, about the Utah Global Forum uh, to Mr. Miller, and if you could uh, please tell us what that is. I've not heard of that, Franz. <laughs> Do you want to tell us what it is? Uh, thank you. Um, the Utah Global Forum is, uh, is really uh, Utah's premier international business conference. It'll be held on August 26th. I hope you're all aware of it. If you're not, please make yourself aware of it. Uh, it is hosted by Governor Herbert. 
It is presented in partnership between the Salt Lake Chamber of Commerce, the Governor's Office of Economic Development, and the World Trade Center, Utah. It'll be a half-day conference, and, and we will continue the wonderful conversations that we've begun here in that venue. Great. Thanks. And thank you, Franz. That was our last question. Let's, uh, I'm going to give some time to Mayor McAdams to wrap up for us, and then I'll ask you to thank our panelists. Mayor, please. Yeah, thank you. Well, first of all, I want to just take a moment to thank uh, a few people. First of all, thank you to the attendees who have who have taken so much time to, to be with us during this uh, Global Cities conversation. And we hope to uh, look forward to your continued engagement over the next few months. Um, a special thank you to the Brookings Institution. Um, we look forward to a, a long and fruitful partnership and, and thank you for the work that we've been, been able to do so far. Uh, JP Morgan Chase for making this all possible for your sponsorship and, and thank you for your leadership and commitment to Utah. Uh, the World Trade Center Utah, of course, and we look forward to working with the World Trade Center Utah, the Governor's Office of Economic Development, the Economic Development Corporation of Utah, of course, uh, of course, the Salt Lake Chamber, uh, our legislature. We've had great support from the legislature over the last few days. I see Representative Hutchings with us yet again. Uh, there may be others out there, but, the, but I'm not able to see you. Um, our Salt Lake County Council, uh, this has been a very uh, unifying an endeavor for in Salt Lake County that something that we come behind and we're very supportive of and also the University of Utah and for your leadership and work in this. So I just wanted to a couple of comments in closing. Um, if there's one question or theme that has been consistent for me um, over the last few days from we've had visitors from from various cohorts that they are participating cities who are joining us in this cohort. Um, many of them are still with us today uh, and some of the other cities um, who are visiting Toronto and, and London. There has been one unifying question that almost everybody has asked me and that is, what in the world is Pioneer Day? <laughs> <clears throat> um, Did you tell them Pioneer Day? Yeah, Pioneer Pion Day. Pion Day. <laughs> that's, that's the new, yeah. Um, so, I've given the answer to many people, and you may have figured it out by right now. But by now, but July 24th, which is this Friday, is the 106th anniversary of the settlement of the state of Utah. And so, not far from where we are now, um, Immigration Canyon, which is the canyon just here that comes right right down by the University of Utah, was in in 1847. Uh, the Mormon pioneers, led by Brigham Young, came into the Salt Lake Valley, and Brigham Young. Uh, stood and proclaimed, this is the right place. And so there's a, a state park here, the this is the place state park. Uh, and we commemorate on the, on the 24th of July, the settling uh, of the Utah, of the Salt Lake Valley. Um, and uh, soon after the Salt Lake Valley was settled, we um, started and, and established, the, the early settlers were able to establish themselves and, and uh, establish a community here. They looked uh, to continue to grow and, and strengthen this community that we have. And so they established something that I think um, is incredibly interesting on so many levels, but something that they called the Perpetual Immigration Fund. This was uh, some private donations and even some of, of the early church donations that were, were set up to bring new immigrants to here to the Salt Lake Valley. And the fund wasn't large, and it was certainly limited. There was more demand than there was availability of funds, and so they had to have some criteria to determine who they would bring here. And, and so they had some need-based criteria, but they also looked at what skills were needed here to continue our growth in the Salt Lake Valley. And uh, Perpetual Immigration Fund, as, as the name suggests, was they would give loans to people, many of them uh, migrating from Europe and Scandinavia, uh, give loans for them to come here to the Salt Lake Valley. And once they came here and established themselves and started to be profitable, they'd pay back these loans, and that would help to fuel future immigration. So I think it's very fitting that we sit here today um, in a Global Cities Initiative to talk about, uh, you know, in Pioneer Day where we celebrate uh, the world that came to Utah. And we celebrate not only the early pioneers who came here to Utah, but it, many days the modern day pioneers. The, uh, you know, oftentimes when I think of pioneers, I think of the 70,000 refugees who have fled um, their home countries for various reasons and now call the Salt Lake Valley their home. And the, and the pioneers that came there for, for, for their various reasons and, and multiple generations of pioneers who now call the Salt Lake Valley home. But we're here as part of this Global Cities Initiative in a similar endeavor to, um, to now say, how do we take, before we were bringing the world to Utah, now how do we take Utah 
to the world. We look at our strengths, and we're in the process now of evaluating the data. What are our strengths and what are our weaknesses? How can we build on those? What skills do we have that we can export, uh, export to the world through the Global Cities Initiative? Um, we look forward to learning from our peers who are, are working with us in the, in the Global Cities Exchange, those who, have, who are several years ahead of us in the Global Cities Exchange and, and, and working with them. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the last few days. It certainly has exceeded um, my expectations, and I hope that you'll find that it's been worth your time. I'm often asked why Global Cities, and, and we've been working, we've been part of this now for about six months, and um, I'm asked, and, and I ask people, I, you know, I say, um, what do you think about, you know, does Utah, does the Salt Lake Valley need to be more globally competitive? What do you think about global competitiveness? And, and the response is oftentimes, I think, surprised, because I, I see all this data and how compelling the data is about strengthening our exports. And it's, such, it's so compelling to me. And the response that I receive from, from people who I talk to is oftentimes a little lackluster. They say, well, yeah, that, that'd be cool to, to, com to be globally relevant. It's chic, certainly. But what I really care about is having a good paying job for my family and that there are good paying jobs here for my kids and my grandkids that, that they don't have to leave the state of Utah to seek career opportunities and advancement. Now I know that that's the same conversation. How do we create good paying jobs and economic prosperity for my kids and your kids and our grandkids? And the answer is by being globally relevant and globally competitive. Um, so a few items of, uh, of maybe bookkeeping, but what we are doing now over the next few months is we are setting the course for a deliberate export strategy. And we need your help. Um, I think Andy Buffmeyer helped to illustrate the point that we need your feedback. We need to know where our data sets can be improved, what, um, what information can be helpful as we set the course for our, our future, for our, our export strategy uh, for the Wasatch Front. Uh, so we're hoping uh, to continue. We've been, we've, we've been reaching out and meeting with companies and asking you know, what obstacles are they facing to exports, how we can help to remove barriers to exports. We ask for your help. If we haven't had the chance to talk to your business, please um, allow us to have that opportunity to have that very specific conversation uh, through your organizations. If you can help us push out the information and the importance of participating in these interviews. Uh, we've, we've got a survey that, uh, that went live a couple of weeks ago. We're looking for as much data as we can gather uh, to inform that survey. So please help us to circulate the survey. Um, tell us what you need. Um, and so we can set the right direction, the right course for our export plan. Uh, as you checked in today, you got a card with a link to the survey and also the contact information from my staff. So we help, hope that you can, can save that, look at it, respond to the survey, and then and, and push that out to other people who you think might be helpful as we, uh, as we develop over the next few months uh, our export strategy. We look, to, look forward to uh, announcing that export plan, export strategy, um, in the beginning of 2016, and then look for your support and collaboration as we work to implement that plan uh, into the future. So uh, again, thank you all for attending and, and spending so much time with us, and we hope to have your support and collaboration as we move forward. Great. Thank you. And thank you all for being here today. Appreciate it.